This is Twit. Many of you probably know that Reddit is going through a bit of um, a kerfuffle. A, a kerfuffle. Yeah. I was going to say war um, <laughs> at the moment. It's at the very least a kerfuffle. Yeah, sure. And I, I just like calling things kerfuffles. That's a so really nice don't word, mind me. right? Yeah. Um, so while we ponder whether it's a kerfuffle or a war or something in between, <laughs> joining us is someone who I think can provide some uh, more insider understanding of this because uh, whether he chose to or not, he's ended up kind of at the forefront of what's going on at Reddit. It is the developer of Apollo, the Reddit client on iOS, Christian Selig. Welcome to the show, Christian. Thanks so much for having me, you too. It's a pleasure. Yeah, it's great to have you here. Great to get to talk to you about this. Um, as a person who has used Apollo for some time, has talked about it on my shows, um, seeing the tweet fly by uh, where you mentioned that there were going to be some changes taking place, some unfortunate changes, um, that was definitely a, a pretty shocking moment, a pretty sad moment. And I'm glad to get to talk to you about this as we inch ever closer uh, to the day where things change. But before we get into that, I always like to start out by making sure that we are all on the same page. So I was hoping that you could tell our listeners what an API is. We need to get this vocabulary in place and then how your app Apollo interacts with Reddit's API specifically. Yeah. Um, so if it helps, um, I think for like the first few years of being a programmer, the concept, like the word API, I still had no idea what it meant, but it's actually, a, it's incredibly simple. And I think that's why it, it is a little confusing. It's deceptively simple. Um, it's just um, a way of talking to something, basically. So it's how you interact with something. So Reddit has an API that allows developers to talk to Reddit as a service and say, hey, could you upload this comment for me? Or could you reply to this comment for me? Or could you give me the posts in this subreddit? Or could you give me the comments for this specific post? And each of those is just an API request. Um, so couldn't be simpler. Like Apple has APIs all over their operating system for doing certain things, like if you were... Um, an app and you wanted to work with the Siri API. So Siri would uh, be able to um, accept commands to your app through voice. Like it's just how you interact with something. And Reddit's historically um, throughout its entire life of gosh, almost 15 years has had uh, an API that lets developers communicate with Reddit um, and get data back and uh, ask it to do things. So it, at, at a very high level, it's, it's incredibly simple. You're just talking with Reddit and uh, hopefully Reddit responds with uh, helpful information. Got it. Yeah, that's a, that's a great way uh, to to understand it, and I I do you really nailed it in terms of it being a lot simpler than what you expect. And so whenever you hear it, you're like, is that all? Are you? Yeah, but that that was a great way to put it. So that API, the Reddit API, is at the center of this Reddit controversy. Uh, tell us about the upcoming change and how that's impacted your ability to continue offering Apollo, the very popular client on iOS. Yeah. So um, like I said, historically, uh, Reddit's had that API and it's been free. So every time um, you requested information, um, you would basically hand Reddit a little token saying like, hey, I'm Apollo. I'm the one asking for this. Like, This information would be handy to have. Um, and Reddit would provide it to developers. And there was kind of like a mutual understanding. Well, well, first off, like for a long time, Reddit didn't have any official app. Um, so if you wanted to browse Reddit on mobile, it was it was through these third party applications. But even once Reddit released it, there was still this kind of understanding. Their CEO even said at the time, like we uh, we want redditors, people who use Reddit, to be able to um, browse Reddit through how they prefer. Um, and if there's a different experience that maybe suits them better, um, we like giving people the option to to browse Reddit in that way. Because say you go to Reddit and you download the official app and, and it just doesn't click for whatever reason. Um, it's kind of better for everyone if rather than just ditching the service altogether, um, maybe there's a, a different way to browse Reddit that um, might uh, strike a chord with you. Um, and, the, and even beyond that, there's like um, less um, preferential reasons that it's nice to have. Like um, Reddit is staffed by a, a, an absolutely massive team of like unpaid volunteer moderators um, who moderate the communities and make sure um, that like spam is kept out, people are respectful, et cetera. And um, they, a lot of them prefer to do such a thing in, in third party apps because the moderator tools are just a little bit more fleshed out or um, they just find them faster or easier to use or there's features that uh, might not be available in the first party app. 
Um, and you also have like accessible users, someone who might be blind or low vision, who um, maybe the first party app isn't very well uh, labeled in terms of like screen reader support. Um, so they'll prefer a third party app. Um, so there's a whole host of reasons why third party apps have been like a huge part of Reddit's culture. Um, and what's changing um, quite rapidly is that they're moving to a, a paid API, which is like to be a hundred percent clear, totally fair. Like mm -hmm. it's one of those things where Reddit came to developers and said, like, look, like we like working with you and we don't want to kill you, but like this, um, giving all of this uh, information away for free, um, isn't something we see as like tenable long term. And like, every developer I talked to was like, yeah, that, that makes sense. Like it, it's been, I think it's benefited both parties, um, historically, but if that's something that you think, um, you would like money for like that's totally reasonable we were if anything excited about it um because like there's been historically been some um specific functions on reddit that weren't exposed through the api so being like oh we might be able to um enter in a partnership with them in a little bit more of a formal capacity mm -hmm. and maybe get access to more of those apis um it was it was it was an exciting opportunity to maybe like formalize our relationship with reddit a little better um but it's it's one of those things like I said before. It's kind of the the the, the detail the devils in the details where um, the price they ultimately landed on and the thirty days they gave from when the pricing was announced to uh, when developers would start incurring potentially massive charges um, was only thirty days. So you kind of have wow. these two really tricky aspects uh, hitting you both at once as a developer, where the API has been available for fifteen years um, and then you have thirty days to um, completely revamp your app. Um, otherwise you'll face like incredibly like to the tune of millions of dollars in charges. Um, so it just became very tricky for developers like myself for Apollo to figure out like how to survive that. And uh, spoiler alert, you, you kind of can't. Yeah. I, I almost imagine it, uh, it uh, leading up to this point, there was a sort of a pedestal upon which was a, a red phone <laughs> and Apollo could always pick up the phone and talk to uh, Reddit and get in touch with Reddit and get the data that it needed and then hang up and then you would go about your way. Then suddenly they're saying, we're going to replace that red phone with a pay phone, which we haven't had for years. And now you're suddenly having to stick quarters into it in order to call up Reddit and get that data that you're trying to get. And there was a part of you that was excited because those quarters you were putting in meant that it would change from just like a standard pay phone to also having a computer terminal in front of it where you could get more information than you ever could before, or interact in all of these different ways. But instead, it sounds like uh, they're asking you to put gold bricks into it instead of just quarters, where in, where you would hope that it could just be the quarters to help it. I appreciate how yeah. close you stuck to that uh, analogy. Thank you. Anyways. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the the only thing I'd build on that analogy would be that like a um, there was kind of a sign out front of the phone booth that said, "Hey, we're 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 going to be doing this. Um, it's not going to be free anymore, but we just want you to know that it's." Um, our interest isn't to like kill you or um, we want this to be like a, a price that's based in reality um, and fair and equitable. Mm -hmm. um, and then you see in a gold bar and you're kind of like, I don't see how that is a cost representative um, <laughs> right. like thing based in reality. And then they're also like, also you have 30 days to start giving us gold bars. Um, and so it's like all those things kind of come together to be like, if you weren't trying to kill third party apps, like, how else did you think this would go? I guess would be mm. would almost be my question. Like uh, it might just be a, they're very, they're quite removed. Like Reddit's like a, they're worth billions of dollars. Um, and it's kind of like, I don't know if they thought that's something that everybody has access to in terms of like millions of dollars, but I'm just building Apollo in my apartment and I certainly don't <laughs> have that kind of money. Um, so yeah, it, it became pretty untenable. I think that's what's so surprising about how this is all played out. Because like like you said earlier, and I agree, like Reddit is a company. It's here to make money. It's its own service. It can make the choices that it wants. Yet it 100%. really seemed to set the stage early on that it was going to do something to um, to allow third party developers like yourself to continue. It kind of it kind of put this this uh, cloud of hope in front of this thing and said, hey, don't, don't worry about it. We're going to come up with something that's going to allow this to continue because it's really important to us. And yet on the other side of their mouth, like when it actually comes out, like it really does seem like two opposite realities. Um, like, have you heard or are you willing to talk, to address <laughs> whether you've heard or not uh, anything from Reddit in in kind of talking about that kind of bait, not bait and switch, but that about face between those two realities? Um. No, not really. I wish I could say I had an explanation, but like I, I've asked them like kind of how they came upon these figures um, because 
they said like these figures seem reasonable to them. And I, and I was kind of saying like in one of my posts, I kind of broke down that they've historically posted, um, like years ago, I think it was either 2019 or 2021. I'd have to look it up, but it was like, here's how much money we've, we've made per quarter. Um, it was like a hundred million dollars in their best quarter. And they, and then they've have X many millions of monthly active users. So it was like 430 million. So you can do some very easy math there to say like, okay, so this is your average revenue per month per user. Um, so if you have like 430 million users and you have $500 million in revenue, that's, you know, napkin math, that's about a dollar a year per mm-hmm. user. And it works out to be about like 12 cents a month. So when you're saying like, we're making 12 cents a month per user, but we think it's reasonable to charge you anywhere from like um, a dollar fifty to like $10 a user, depending on how much they use the app. That's like, <laughs> you're looking at a multiple of like anywhere from 10 times to almost a hundred times what they're earning per user. Like it's just kind of like they weren't ever able to answer how that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm not sure. It can. <laughs> yeah. It kind of doesn't, right? <laughs> yeah. It just doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was almost why they couldn't explain it. And, and it's, and even beyond like the financials of, of revenue, I, I think Reddit's in a very unique position versus a lot of even other social media sites where you have like the Twitters and Facebooks of the world where they, um, their their moderators for the content they have are paid employees. Like I think Facebook is they have like something like a two hundred million dollar contract for two years with a company to do their moderation. Where Reddit is like completely, um, it's unpaid volunteer moderators doing this just because they enjoy the communities. And 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 I think it's it's very easy to say like Reddit has um, bills to pay and. and engineers to pay and they have to keep the lights on like a hundred percent absolutely but it's also like i think it's important to remember how much free labor they have that benefits Mm. the website Mm -hmm. and not doing them a disservice by cutting off tools that they use to do their job um and just even the community at large like reddit's like (laughs) reddit doesn't sell any hardware or software themselves like their values intrinsically in the community and the content they create so i i think balancing this act of being like are we respecting our community and moderators uh, through our actions um, is really integral, like fundamentally to the financials of the company as well. And, and, and it's one of those things that it kind of feels like they're losing sight of, even though historically they've been quite good at balancing that. Now, we, we don't have too much uh, time, but I've still got a lot of questions. Mm. I do really want to ask you this, and you've touched on it a little bit. I know you've probably gotten this question a lot. In fact, I've seen people ask you this question before. Um, you published a post in which you announced you'd be shutting down Apollo just right before Reddit's new API policy goes into effect. And the question uh, is, what made you choose to shut down the app or what is going to make you choose to shut down the app instead of, say, raising the price for the Apollo subscription or asking folks to, you know, uh, throw money into a tip jar for, you know, the, to, to sort of get you over the the hump? Why? What, what's the choice to kind of shut down instead of go forth? And uh, I want to preface this, or I guess post this by saying that um, the answers that I've seen you give uh, really have made a lot of sense. And so I just want you to be able to communicate that to our listeners. Yeah. Um, honestly, there's so many reasons. Um, and, and, and I think, I guess in the interest of time, I'll just say three. So, so the first one is um, it doesn't seem to me like at this point through the actions Reddit have taken, um, have indicated that they want third party apps around in any capacity anymore. So it would be one of those things where like, if, if you're going into work every day, knowing your boss kind of hates you and is trying to figure out a way to get rid of you, it's not an environment that is super productive to work in, mm-hmm. I would say. And, and I think like Reddit's actions, even through how they've kind of indirectly tried to kill third party apps, but even beyond that, like there's been weird allegations where they said, I've like tried to blackmail them and stuff, which thankfully I recorded the call <laughs> and said, showed there that, wasn't the case at all. Um, so there's like kind of just this bad blood aspect where they really seem to hate third party apps for some reason. Um, and then, so the, I guess that would be reason one. Reason two would be um, even just like, okay, just charge everyone $5 a month if they, if they want to stay around. Like the economics of that are really tricky because um, the way Reddit chose to do this is based on um, a per API call basis, which isn't inherently weird or anything, but at the price they chose, it, it, it changes the calculus a little. So like, um, Unsurprisingly, like a free user typically uses less API calls um, than uh, a paid user. So mm-hmm. they cost less. Um, so it, the average subscription user in Apollo currently uses about a little less than 500 requests per day on average. So when you do the math, that works out to about um, over the course of a month, it would cost about $3 and 60, 60 or 70 cents to keep them around. Um, so if I charge them $5, 
um, after Apple takes their cut, you're looking at like three dollars and fifty cents less to the left to the developer. So I'm at like 10, 20 cents in the red um, on your average user. So then it's like, okay, so maybe you charge a little bit more, but then it's like you also have I also have a subset of users, like five percent, which is like tens of thousands of users who use between like one and two thousand requests a day. So you're looking at that point, like between like seven dollars and fifty cents in fees and and fifteen dollars in fees. And and it just gets so uh, exponentially expensive almost that that it becomes almost you've got to like choose like a phone plan where you try to estimate how much usage you're using um, and then you have to turn off their service after a while. So it becomes very untenable even from a financial aspect. Um, and then even if the price was cheaper, I, the third reason would be that I already have like um, like around like 50,000 yearly subscribers who um, paid uh, like say, Micah, you, you could have paid like three months ago. So you would still have like 12 or uh, nine months of your 12 months of service left. Mm-hmm. Um, and I already collected your payment based on the operating costs I had at the time. So like design fees, um, server fees, I have a part-time server engineer. Um, and about the dollar a month I, I charged you was, was able to cover that. Now Reddit's coming in and saying like starting July 1st, you're going to start incurring charges um, where each of those users at minimum, at absolute minimum, but more on average $3.50 will cost about a dollar. So you have 50,000 users who have already paid and I can't monetize through no fault of their own, to be clear, um, that are going to start incurring between one and say $3 each. So I'm looking at a bill of like 50 to $150,000 a month um, starting that'll start incurring July 1st um, that I can't make any further money off of them. That'll just be like potentially hundreds upon hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, I'll have to pay over the course of the year until their subscription expires. So like the, the calculus there is it's just cheaper to work with Apple to refund all those subscriptions and close up shop than to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to Reddit. Um, so there's like so many aspects where just the way they went about this um, kill the third party apps in, in so many ways. Um, and yeah, I wish there was a way I could <laughs> figure it out. But I talked with a lot of smart people. I was at Dub Dub last week and just no matter who I talked to and how I tried to ring it out, it was just wasn't making any sense. There was always like a, a hiccup. Mm-hmm. Um, and I tried to talk to Reddit and say, like, could you give us more time to make this change? And there was just radio silence on there and they haven't answered my emails in a while. So, yeah, and that's that's one thing that I think is well worth uh, pointing out is the fact that it's not as if you got this news and then you just said, well, this isn't going to work and we're done with it. No. You and other third party developers have communicated with Reddit, have tried to reach some sort of agreement where instead of gold bars, it's silver bars or something. Um, going back to the original metaphor. But um, <laughs> I want to ask you one last question. I wish uh, we could have you stick around for a lot longer, but uh, mm-hmm. I'm curious, do you think there's any chance that these ongoing blackouts, because there are some uh, subreddits who've announced that they're going to continue things uh, past this point, the outcry and even the press attention that you and others are getting, do you think that any of that could result in a change on Reddit's end? Or are you pretty much certain, or not Reddit's end, but Apollo's end, or are you pretty much certain that Come uh, June 30th, I believe, uh, you are going to sort of flip that big switch. Um, I would say I really hope it'll have an effect because, like I said, the changes that they would have to do to show the community that they are listening are so minor. It would just be a matter of like, even if you just kept the same price, just saying like, I will give you 90 days to try to come up with some gold bars and completely revamp your app or... And ideally saying like, look, we apologize for how we handled this and we, and we treated developers with a lot of honestly disrespect and um, we're kind of going back to the drawing board and we want to talk with them and figure out how we can make this right going forward. Um, and yeah, I, I think those steps are so minor and so easy to do uh, that I would hope that they would respect the community enough to just do those minor things. Um, but it's honestly, it's really anyone's guess at this point. I, I have no clue. <laughs> Well, I want to thank you so much for taking some time today to talk to us. Um, Christian Seelig, if folks want to follow you online and see perhaps what's next, uh, where should they go to do that? Um, I am on Twitter and Mastodon as uh, at Christian Seelig. All right. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. The pleasure's all mine. Thank you so much for having me. This episode of Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. 
ACI Learning's courses are easy to navigate, and their structure is much more straightforward than traditional training programs. Try it for yourself, and then bring the whole team along. For individuals, use the code TWIT30 for 30% off a standard or premium individual IT Pro membership at go.acilearning.com slash TWIT. 